Reading with your kids. Hola, Niha, Konnichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Mahaba, Mori Miliwanji, Namaste, Jambo, Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We're coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so delighted and so honored that you are joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to tell all of your family and friends about the show. I'd be delighted if you could tell your kid's teacher and the principal and the librarian. I would also would really appreciate if you could subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Stitcher Radio, wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is Brady Smith. He's returning to the show to celebrate Louie and Bear Bite Back. Before we invite Brady back in the studio, we want to let you know that this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by The Antidote's Pollution Solution, written by Dr. Patty Michelle. Patty Michelle is a writer and a public health specialist who combines her passion for women, technology, science, and the world to inspire women and girls through her writing. That inspiration can be found in her new middle grade novel, The Antidote's Pollution Solution. Just when a group of fifth grade friends is returning to normal life and to school after global pandemic, the waters of the Chesapeake Bay have become polluted by a plastic eating bacteria experiment gone wrong. And both fish and kids are getting sick. The antidotes race against the clock to get the word out to the world about how to stay safe. But... Will the antidotes be able to get enough kids to achieve zero plastic use before it makes any more fish or children sick? Join the antidotes in their first science adventure and stay tuned for more stories to come. The Antidotes Pollution Solution by Dr. Patty Michelle. Get your copy today. Join us right now from the beautiful city of Los Angeles in California. Our guest is returning to the show to celebrate his brand new graphic novel, it's called Louie and Bear Bite Back. Please welcome back to the show, Brady Smith. Hey, Brady, how are you? I am doing great. How are you doing? Thanks for having me back. Oh, I'm delighted to have you back on. We love celebrating graphic novels here. I, I, I didn't appreciate how valuable it was when my kid was reading graphic novels Um and I'm, I'm scared to say, I just realized it was like 17 years ago when he was in middle school. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I didn't have the respect for it then that I've grown to, to have right now. Graphic novels serve a great service, especially to kids who we would call reluctant readers. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. So tell us about Louie and Bear Bite Back. Uh, Louie and Bear Bite Back is the sequel to Louie and Bear in the Land of Anything Goes. Uh, it picks up right where the first book left off, where our cast of characters are kind of getting used to being on this uh, funky intergalactic planet, if you will. And uh, just when they think that everything is hunky-dory, um, something pretty catastrophic happens where I don't want to give too much away, but one of the devices of the first book that you think has been destroyed has been found by a new character that does not have everybody's best interest in mind Mm -hmm. and wants to use it for his own, um, I say evil, he would say, or she would say, um, misunderstood purposes. And, you know, just uh, things go south. (laughs) And our characters have to figure out how to solve the problem and hopefully at the end of the book get back home. You know, as you're describing this book, I'm I'm reminded of the cartoons and the series that I used to watch when I was growing up back in the 60s. You know, Batman, it gets to the end. It's like everything is solved. And wait a minute, there's a yeah. new cliffhanger here. Right. It's sort of like life, right? As soon <laughs> as you think you got it figured out, somebody throws a curveball and that what that's what makes it interesting. You gotta you gotta pivot, shift, and figure things out. Um, I you know, it's funny that you said the uh, cartoons growing up because that's that's what I love about these books, and that's why I wanted to write them and draw them is because when I was a kid, 
Saturday mornings were the mornings that cartoons were on. And it wasn't like today, you know, my kids can put on any, you know, streaming device and watch cartoons whenever the heck they want. Not that mm-hmm. we let them, mm-hmm. but they can. Um, and, and that's why Saturday mornings I looked forward to so much because I would watch my cartoons. I would watch, you know, the Justice League or He-Man or all those wonderful shows from the early 80s. And I would have a, I would actually staple a bunch of eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper together and I would draw the characters. And then when the show was over, I would continue the cartoon episode and make my own story up. So make kind of a sequel to what I was watching. Um, And I guess now I'm 50 and I'm still kind of doing the same thing. (laughs) (laughs) I've never thought about it that way before until you said that actually. So, wow. What a, uh, and 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 those of you who are lis- those of you who are listening can't see this, but there was a true look of revelation and a little bit of horror come over Brady's Yeah, yeah, face. That absolutely. Is a- <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's neat, you know. I mean, it's neat watching watching cartoons with my kids now. And sorry, I don't know why that's making noise. Did that just make a ding on you? It, it did, but that's that's okay. That's where okay, yeah, we're, we're easy going I mean, here. You know, we're trying to uh, – <clears throat> my my son is getting home from his first day of first grade any moment. So I am tucked up in his room uh, Okay. further away from the front door. So there's hopefully as little dog barking <laughs> and, uh, you know, <laughs> celebrating as possible. Well, that – you know, I am honored that you're taking taking time away from that momentous moment um, to be with us here. I really appreciate it. Uh, that, that's – it is. It's, it's a magical time in kids' lives, and kids growing up today don't realize that the only time we could re- watch cartoons was on Saturday mornings, and it was kind of uh, sacred. You know, church was on Sunday, but Saturday morning cartoons, that was, that was it. You're very, very right. And I mean, cartoons, but even shows, you know, Mm -hmm. my wife and I have tried to explain to our kids that you had a certain day, a certain time to watch something. And if you missed it, you missed it. (laughs) I mean, this was even before VHS and taping and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think there's the, uh, it's almost a blessing and a curse, right? Mm-hmm. Where uh, I miss the days of, you know, you missed it. And yeah. uh, that's it. That's the way it is. You can talk about it. But, you know, I I feel like everything's just so easy. You know, even, even the instantaneous iPhone photos where you don't have to wait mm-hmm. not only a week, but God forbid an hour to get the picture back. You yeah. know, everything is so instantaneous now. And uh I don't know. I don't know if that's a good thing. Yeah, it kind of that. I I, I remember going down to the photo mat and, you know, just when you, when you open up that little envelope of of pictures and, you know, just seeing what, 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 what did you capture on that roll of film that you spent so much money for and you paid to get developed. And now, you know, we have this thing in our pockets that take better pictures than all the cameras have we had back then and we can see them instantaneously absolutely and i mean remember when you would get your roll of film back and maybe 20 percent of them were were worthwhile Mm -hmm. yes most of the shots you're like what (laughs) so but yeah i you know that i have to say one thing and uh, for me uh as the author and illustrator of this this graphic novel is i had to wait for it you know I just got it in the mail. I just got this copy on um, Thursday, uh-huh. last week, and it's been almost a year. Wow! So there you go. I mean, I, I, I have been uh, practicing the art of patience, uh, when, <laughs> especially when it comes to these things, because you know you you work hard on something. You're so excited. You want to see how it turns out, and and. Uh, Tough noogies. You have to wait. <laughs> but I have to say, I 
My goodness, I was so thrilled, uh, especially with the first book and the same with this. I just, I mean, I would be lying if I said I didn't shed a tear when I opened the box and and saw that they were there. It's a it's a pretty rewarding, fun feeling. That's that's neat. Hey, I, I'm curious. I've I've had conversations with um, author illustrators of, of graphic novels recently and talked to them about the the inspiration for their characters, and I got two very different and interesting answers. One of the author illustrators, um, as she was talking about the inspiration for the character, she said, I knew I had to draw them a whole bunch of times, so I wanted to make it as simple as possible. Mm. And then the next author uh, illustrator I talked to to, um, said, uh, yeah, I'm working on this uh, uh, historical graphic novel, and it's really uh, a pain in the neck because it's uh, about ancient Greece and there's so much detail and it's really a lot of work, and I don't like it. <laughs> right. What about you? Does it those things run through your mind as you're creating your characters for the first time? They do, um, but then it's a it's a passing thought, you mm-hmm. know, because I get so caught up in trying to make something fun and cool and something that I think would that a kid would or or myself would get a kick out of. Um, there definitely were moments with this with this book, especially because there's a lot more characters, there's a lot more going on, there's a lot more monsters. And in the first book, there was Louie, Bear, Cluck, Tootie, and Worm as the good guys, the gang moving through the uh, the planet. And now on in this book, I've added I think three or four characters to the existing gang. So what that did was exactly what you were saying a minute ago. When I, because you know, with a graphic novel, you have to draw panels mm-hmm. on a page, like a comic book, basically. And each panel, you are kind of drawing the same thing over and over, but different actions and you know, movements and stuff happening. So I drew almost nine characters in each panel for, oh my goodness, probably a hundred pages, uh, and that was a moment where I was like, uh, <laughs> do I really need well, this, I made this bed? I got to lay in it. But, <laughs> but the ultimate, uh, the, the end result is there's just so much more going on and it's so much more excitement for the reader. I hope, I mean, mm-hmm. I, it's just, it's, it, there's a lot going on. Yeah. Well, <laughs> as you're, as you're speaking, it sounds a lot like the old, um, Spanking in our gang, kind, right. of, kind of serials, and you know, even Bugs Bunny and Friends, and just that core group of characters that we can fall in love with, and we know that they're going to get into some mischief, right. and something's you know, uh, something's going to fall on the top of the head of the road runner, but we just love it. Yeah, they're reliable. Um, they're always, you know, they're kind of there for you, and. Uh, I, I, the story's really about Louie and Bear, and then everybody else is almost. If you look at it like a like a TV show, they're kind of co stars, mm-hmm. right? But they're the, they're the gang, you know. It's almost like the Sandlot or Stand by Me. It's these group of friends that are going through these things together. <clears throat> Excuse me, and it's it's like childhood. I mean, I remember when I was growing up, I had one or two best friends, and then a group of buds that we just kind of, you know, uh, rode our bikes, played in the ditch, got into stuff, and uh, it was just, it was absolutely wonderful. Um, And I wanted it to have that kind of feel where you get lost in it. As Mm -hmm. an adult, reading it, especially with your kid, like, you know, the kid, this is his moment to get into, uh, you know, adventures and mischievous events if you will and and go outside and explore and we almost get to relive it with them so mm-hmm. uh, you know when i was growing up i love and i still do i there's been this resurgence in star wars which has been a lot of fun because my son and my daughter are at that age where i was when it came out and i get to relive that with them and calvin and Hobbes was also just i absolutely loved it when i was growing up so I wanted these graphic novels to have that sort of feel, you Mm -hmm. know, of kids outside uh, living their lives, exploring, seeing new things, 
and working things out, mm -hmm. you know, because I think that it's healthy for a child to get into not, nothing dangerous. Of course, I'm mm -hmm. just saying childhood stuff, right. To get into, get into the mix and figure out a way to solve the problem or, or get out of it. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where, you know, as, as a dad, but also as the uh, author and illustrator, it's, it's what I think about when I read with my kids, this book. Yeah. You, you know, mentioning, that you know getting outside and get having adventures in our neighborhoods and being mm -hmm. on a bike and riding in the woods I don't, do kids get as much chance to do that nowadays i see kids in their lives just seem so programmed and it's school and then an after school program and then a ballet class and soccer and do they yeah. do they get a chance to get outside and explore on their own anymore you know it's a great question and it's something that my wife and i and i'm not joking when I say this, we talk about daily mm -hmm. um, because now there's play dates, <laughs> you know, we got a play date. What the heck is a play date? <laughs> I, I mean, really, you know, so I feel like it's, um, it's unfortunate and it, it's, 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 it's hard for me as a parent and my wife, because we want our children to have the freedom that we had. I, you know, my wife lived by the beach and she would walk to the beach, walk and get a popsicle, walk home. I lived in Texas. I had a BMX bike and it was my freedom. I got on that thing and I would be gone and I knew to be home when it was dusk because it would be dinner time and that was it. But there was so much freedom involved. I mean, I would go down to the ditch, we would build ramps, we would catch turtles, we would just do our thing. And it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's our fault mm -hmm. as parents not letting them have that luxury of freedom, or if it's a different world that we live in. And I don't trust that my kids would be safe. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's probably the latter. If it was up to me, I would let my kids ride their bike. I just know that it would scare the heck out of me. And I, and I, you know, I, my, my role as a parent is to keep my children, my children safe. Mm -hmm. So it's such a, it's, it's just a, it's such a hard question because yeah. also we live in Los Angeles. <laughs> so there's that, you know, if we lived somewhere way out in the country and my kids could disappear into the woods. And I knew that they were just in the woods and mm -hmm. not near Ventura Boulevard, then I would definitely be uh, a lot more comfortable with letting them do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's good that families have graphic novels like Louie and Bear bite back to kind of live, let their kids live that adventure vicariously. I, yes. And, you know, the thing about reading a graphic novel, I mean, because I've done, well, I have my third children's book coming out next summer, but graphic novels, you know, a children's book you can read in a, in a short period of time, basically. And, and mm -hmm. that's why, why they're made that way for, you know, the young kids attention and you know, learning words and all this stuff. But the beauty about these young readers graphic novels is they're 160 pages. Mm -hmm. And I and I'm not kidding when I say there's probably 1,100 separate illustrations in this book because some pages have one panel real big, mm -hmm. some pages have nine to ten panels. Um, but the beauty is is that I always when I was growing up, my my sister and I, she's three and a half years younger than me, we were given, and this is so foreign to my kids, we were given 30 minutes a week to watch television. We got to watch one show a week. My sister and I thought we were brilliant because I'd pick a different show and she'd pick a different show and ultimately we'd get two shows. But that was it. And my mom and dad always said, if you guys watch something on PBS or something to do with nature or something where you're going to actually learn something, then you can watch that whenever you want. But if you're going to watch something that's not that, you have 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So our children, they don't have that. Like we, we have very strict iPad times, TV times, but we're not 
you know, that strict. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the beauty about the graphic novel, the reason I said how long it was and how much is involved in it is that they can, like you said, kind of immerse themselves and escape into this whole world, which they're not watching a screen. Mm -hmm. And that to me is what's so cool about it. Um, and I, I think movies and series are fantastic, but for what this is right now with my kids, when I see them pick it up and flip through it, it fills me with joy because, you know, they're, they're practicing the art of reading yeah. and they're using their imagination mm -hmm. and I'm sorry, but nothing beats your own personal imagination Absolutely. ever. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm just so thrilled about, I'm, I'm just thrilled that Penguin loved Louie and Bear enough that they're letting me do it. I mean, it's like, I don't say this lightly. It might be my favorite thing to do. I just love it. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm contributing something that's good. And that feels really nice. Oh, that's, that's really wonderful. And, you know, I, I you are doing something that I, you know, I alluded to the fact that I didn't appreciate graphic novels and the value when my son was in middle school and I would go into his, and I would support him reading the anime and the graphic novels. We'd go out mm. and we'd get it for them. And anytime I was on the road, I'd grab some and bring them home to him. But I also would go in his room and kind of, you know, just say, oh, would you please read something without a picture in it? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I wasn't valuing the time that he was reading as reading as much as I would have if, if he was reading a, a, t a traditional novel. And sure. I think that that was a mistake because there, there are certain kids that this is this is their reading, and this is what turns them on. And I think we need to celebrate that. Agreed. And I, you know, anything that they're, if they're sitting down and they're actively looking at a book, I think that's a success. Mm -hmm. And you're right. It is definitely something to celebrate. And the neat thing about the graphic novels, the, the length of them, a lot of people say is a stepping stone for kids to go into the novels because mm -hmm. they're devoting time and they're, you know, holding on to something uh, for as long as it takes them to get through it. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that's that's how you read a book. You, yeah. you grab the book, you sit down, you spend time with it, you put it back down, you come back to it. And so a lot of people say that that these young reader graphic novels are, are actually very beneficial for kids to eventually pick up a, a much lo longer book. Yeah. So. yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you were saying that this is one of your favorite things to do. And I think that that's saying something because you are telling stories in a multitude of ways. You shared with us that you're writing picture books and you are in, uh, uh, you know, on TV series and movies. And so you're telling stories in many different ways to hear you tell us that this is your possibly your favorite way to tell a story. I think is pretty special. Yes, thank you. I mean, you know, I I'm going to go a, a step further and, and say not even possibly. It it is my favorite way to tell a story. And I, I've been an actor for you know 20 years now, um, and it is a lot of fun. It, it truly is. I always say between the words action and cut, it's just awesome. You know, it's it's just a good time because. You, you're working, it's a collaborative art, you're on set, it's, you know, it's basically acting, if you break it down in its simplest form, it's living truthfully in an imaginary circumstance. Mm -hmm. It's fun. You're, it, you're, you're a kid, you know, that's, you're, you're play acting, it's, except, except you're doing it as an adult, it's, and it's a good time. The difference between acting and these books, for me, is that this is my story. Mm -hmm. When I'm acting, it's someone else's story and I'm a character in it and I'm saying the words that they wrote, mm -hmm. which is again, a lot of fun, but it's really cool to have my words in my story. Yeah. I think that's why maybe since this has come to me a little bit later in life, mm -hmm. writing these graphic novels and the children's books and stuff, I feel like that's why I, I appreciate it so much more yeah. where 
is is mo as fun as it is to be on a set and working with a great deal of people and you know again that collaborative art form it's also really nice to sit down in your own home and have a cup of coffee and be by yourself mm -hmm. and work it out and figure it you know it's it's almost like my wife is really good at math. I am horrible at math. <laughs> but I look at the the writing and the in the uh conceptualizing of the idea and coming up with these books and then the the second phase of the paneling and figuring out taking the story that you wrote and putting it into panels and figuring out what characters for each panel. It's very much almost like math where it's not um a easy mm -hmm. or b a relaxing kind of uh you know thing to do you i mean it's it's uh it takes a lot of thought and effort but i feel like i always tell my kids that anything that's worth doing if it's challenging it's so much more rewarding yeah you know the stuff that's easy it's not as rewarding. Mm -hmm. And that's how I feel about these, especially again, going back to getting the box of books and waiting a year to see how they turn out, you know, and I, I get my agent and the publisher are wonderful. And I see, you know, sneak peeks and stuff and mm -hmm. help with the color and all that stuff. But to actually physically hold the book is, I mean, it's about as uh, rewarding to an artist or a writer as it gets, I would imagine. I yeah. mean, these are only books I've ever done, but yeah, it's just. I'm, 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 sh I'm sure it is. I know that, you know, I receive the, the advanced reader copies and the unfinished and the folded and gathered. I remember the first time I got one of those, I'm thinking, they sent me a broken book. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, where's the cover? I yeah. <laughs> I might have had that same thought, to be honest with you, where. Geez, I, I had a whole. I thought it was going to be a lot better than this, you know. <laughs> and That's someone said you should funny. be honored for that. I'm like, okay. <laughs> that is really funny. You know, my my parents are incredibly supportive, and they've always been supportive. Um, and I remember for Louie and Bear Bite Back, this one that just came out. You know, my mom and dad were like, "Well, we want to see some pages and da 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 da." And uh, these books, I always draw old school with a pen on paper wow. i mean the whole thing is done pen on paper and then i take those pages and i scan them and then i send them to the publisher and then you know editing and blah 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 but i had the black and white ink pages and i went to you know kinko's and i ran a, a copy and i mailed them to my parents and one thing that i forgot is that when when i drew the book it's written, you know, the text, the thought bubbles, the speech bubbles, they're written out in words mm -hmm. when I do it in pencil. But when I ink it, there's the process where they add the words to the empty, you know, speech bubble mm -hmm. um, just so it, it fits. And if it changes languages down the road, the whole art doesn't need to be switched out. Just, you know, what is the dialogue? Mm -hmm. I mailed a copy to my parents and I didn't even think about it, but all the speech <laughs> and thought bubbles were empty. <laughs> so my parents get this and they're like, uh, is this a create your own adventure type of thing that we used to read? From? What the heck? And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. So when you said that, it just, oh my goodness. I just remembered that. That was that was hilarious. What my dad did, who my dad's, you know, hilarious. He he truly is. And what he did, just to be kind of a smart aleck, is he xeroxed his own pages and then wrote all the voice box and speech bowls and then mailed it back. And he's like, "This is how I do it." And it, you know, obviously it was completely different than what the real book is. But man, it was funny to read. Oh my goodness. Well, this I'm, I I love it. Um, maybe maybe you should do one of those create your own adventure editions of Louis and Bear. That would be fun. I mean, I've never even thought about that, but 
You know, I I mentioned a minute ago that I love these guys so much, and I always want to keep doing them. I I just want you know their story to continue, however that may be. Um, it's neat when I get these Instagram stories and posts and DMs of kids drawing their own Louie and Bear adventures, which I actually get quite a few of. And that to me is so cool. Yeah. I, I mean, that I've made some characters that are, that are kind of living on and not kind of that are living mm -hmm. on in other children's imaginations and they're creating their own adventures. Like I did mm -hmm. when I was watching the cartoons, you mm -hmm. know, when I was a kid. So it all is kind of full circle. It's really, really neat. You're making me think of all this stuff that <laughs> I just seriously haven't thought about. Like that is super special. Awesome. Wow. Well, yeah. you know, any, any talk of turning Louie and Bear into a cartoon? There is, there is talk. There is talk right now, which is very, very exciting. It's one of those things where my wife is really good about this. She's like, you can be excited and that's okay. <laughs> but just, you know, <laughs> pump the brakes a little bit, pump the brakes, mm -hmm. kind of, you know, bask in the glory of the excitement and don't uh, get ahead of yourself, mm -hmm. you know, the old saying, don't count your chickens before they hatch type situation. Yeah. So being, being an actor, I have had so many close calls, <laughs> you know, so many opportunities where I use the analogy, it's Christmas morning and, and, you know, you reach out and you can put your fingertips on the present and then somebody's like, not so fast. <laughs> and they pull it away. Like, that's what it feels like sometimes being, um, an actor. Mm -hmm. So with the talk of the possibility of Louie and Bear becoming a series, I can say that the way it's going right now, I have to pinch myself because it's a lot of fun. And, you know, I'm trying to do what my beautiful wife suggests and just bask in the glory of the successes, mm -hmm. uh, at present mm -hmm. and hope for, you know, think good thoughts and, and hope that things continue to go well. Yeah. So, and that, and that feels good yeah. right there. So it's been neat, you know, because a lot of my days are on zoom calls like this mm -hmm. and talking about projects or meeting about projects. And I feel like with anything, you can get caught up in the what's next in the, How's this going to work out? And, you know, it's human nature. Mm -hmm. um, but to take a, a second and sit back and just put my hand on this book and look at it, and it's actually a, a physical thing that I can hold and smell, you know, it's like a real thing that, that always, uh, it fills my heart. Yeah, it does. It fills my heart because I'm like, this this is this is something right here, and it's something to to be proud of yeah, this moment. Absolutely. Well, I am I am delighted for you, and I'm delighted for all the families and for and all the hours that they're going to spend together. Hopefully, reading Louis and Bear bite back. Um, Thank you, Brady. Tell us where we can go to find out more about Louis and Bear bite back, and find out more about everything you're up to. Yes, uh, a few places. Uh, the book, Louie Bear Bite Back, hits the bookshelves on September 13th, and they'll be at bookstores everywhere. Um, always, you can get it online. You just type in Louie and Bear Bite Back, and it'll pop up. Um, you can always go on my – I'm not – I have a love-hate relationship with social media. I feel like it's a uh, necessary tool mm -hmm. to spread the word for my books, but – you know, it's, uh, it can be a lot. It can um, be a lot. Just in general, it can be a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I keep my social media page very light, very fun, very silly. Uh, my Instagram handle is Brady Smith here, H E R E, like Brady Smith here, you know, like <laughs> when you raise your hand in homeroom. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you can always see what my family and I are up to on that page. Um, and it has information on upcoming 
signings, books, ideas, everything. So awesome, awesome. We've had a, this has been a really fun time speaking to the author and illustrator of Louie and Bear Bite Back, Brady Smith. Hey, Brady, thanks so much for being back with us. Thank you so much for having me. I I had fun last time, and this was a joy as well. So thank you. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading with the Kids podcast. Our guest will be Amy Sarek King. She'll be here to celebrate her middle grade novel. It's called Attack of the Black Rectangles. Very timely discussion about intolerance and censorship. You don't want to miss it. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Chris, want to start by thanking our guest, Brady Smith. Please be sure to check out Louie and Fair Bite Back. Also want to thank Dr. Patty Michelle. Be sure to check out her new middle grade novel. It's called The Antidotes Pollution Solution. I want to thank my team, Fata McCann, Lori Brady, Mirabella Q. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.